Hello, my name is Michael Williams, Pro90D founder and speech coach. And hopefully you've been following the series where we have been talking about how you can start speaking smoothly in as little as 15 minutes per day. And so what we've been doing is walking through exactly how the Pro90D Smooth Speech System addresses your speech. How does it improve the way that you speak. And so if you have been struggling with your speech, if you've been struggling to say the things that you want to say, the way that you want to say them, when you want to say them, you're in a meeting, you're in an interview, you're in a social situation, and you want to say something, you want to tell a story, you want to make a comment, or you want to do a presentation, and you haven't been able to get the words out that you wanted to get out in that moment, then this is the video series for you. And we've been walking through exactly how Pro90D addresses and impacts and improves your speech. And so just as a very, very quick review, we said that Pro90D improves your speech by addressing these five dimensions. So the way that you speak isn't just about the way that you speak physically. It's not just about the way you enunciate the way you uh, intonate, the way you articulate. It's not just about the physical, uh, what the mechanics of how you speak, but it also has a lot to do with your mindset, your identity, your livelihood and lifestyle, right? It impacts that and is impacted by that as well. And just all of your other life experiences, all of your other life experiences. And so we say that Pro90D will help you smile. This is a way for you to remember. It will help you smile because Pro90D will help you improve your speech in all of these different dimensions, okay? So in our last session, we went into detail about how the eight daily activities that you'll find inside the system and that when you're working with me, I will help you with how those eight activities help you to overcome, to address these specific issues and more. So we said that when you speak, generally people, that at least I've worked with, minimally struggle with these sorts of things, blocking, losing airflow, repeating, speaking too fast, so forth and so on. Today, we're going to look at Mindset, mindset, okay? We're gonna look at mindset. Now I know that you're probably wondering, well, what does this have to do with uh, learning how to improve my speech or improving my speech in as little as 15 minutes a day? And we are getting to that, but before we jump into the blueprint that says, okay, here's how I can improve my speech in as little as 15 minutes a day, you need to understand why you're doing what you're doing. So the activities that you'll need to do every day to improve your speech, it's, it's very important that you understand what those activities are and why you're doing them and how they're impacting the different dimensions of your speech. Does that make sense? Because I could just give you a list of activities or say, okay, do this or do that. And then you do it and then you say, well, I'm not sure how this is, or I'm not sure if this is working, or why do I need to do that? Or how is this helping me, right? So we're walking you through each and every one. So you say, aha, I know why I'm listening to this. I know why I'm watching that. I know why I'm practicing this, okay? Very, very important. So we're gonna be getting to that, but you'll need to follow me with this first. So what is mindset? Well, mindset, there are lots of different definitions, but mindset, its most simplistic form is a person's way of thinking, right? It is a fixed way of thinking. Notice this word here, set, right? Two words, mindset. So it's a set or fixed pattern or fixed way of thinking. But let's go a little deeper. It's a fixed mental attitude, right? A fixed mental attitude, fixed mental attitude, or disposition that predetermines that predetermines a person's response to okay 
predetermines a person's response to and interpretations of situations. So let's go back. A mindset is a fixed mental attitude, fixed mental attitude, or disposition, right? Kind of just way you think, right? The way you think about things that predetermines, that predetermines a person's responses to and a person's responses to and interpretations of situations. So your mindset is going to tell you how you will interpret different situations. So let's look at an example or two of this. Let's just say that your mindset says that you generally uh, struggle when you introduce yourself or you generally struggle when you get started speaking, right? So when I get started speaking or have a difficult time getting started speaking, I have a difficult time introducing myself or I have a difficult time when I'm speaking in a meeting and there are people in authority there. Okay. So your mindset says that this is how you generally respond and react and perform in those speaking situations. Now, because you have that mindset, because you have that belief, that way of thinking, that is going to uh, inform and literally predetermine how that situation happens. So when you go to introduce yourself, when you're in that meeting and there's people in authority there, your mindset is already fixed and it says, this is how I generally struggle with my speech. So when you're in that particular speaking situation, you're gonna walk into it already thinking, kind of already knowing that this is likely to happen to you or that this is going to happen to you. Make sense? And so because of that, you may become more worried, you may become more anxious and nervous, you may start negatively anticipating, we'll talk about that, anticipating that this is actually going to happen. And what that does is in many ways it causes it to happen because you become fixated on the thing that you don't want to happen. You are thinking about or hoping that you avoid that thing. You're hoping that you don't do that thing, that you don't struggle. You actually struggle. Okay. So we're going to look at, we're going to look at um, several specific challenges that people have with regards to their way of thinking. And there are more, but one is just worry, right? Worry or worrying. Two, let's just put worrying. This is almost the same. Negative anticipation, right? Negative anticipation. Three, Self-consciousness, 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 right? Four is, now you may not have heard of this word, or maybe ruminating, ruminating, five, regret. So these are some things that people... struggle with. All right, so worrying. When you've experienced challenges with your speech in various speaking situations, you may go through your entire day worrying about the next speaking situation, worrying about when I answer the phone, am I going to struggle to say hello? If I have to introduce myself, if I have to order this coffee, if I have to say this word, if I have to talk to these people. So you may go through your day worrying and actually avoiding certain speaking situations because you're afraid, right? You are negatively anticipating that you're going to have challenges. Does this make sense? Does this sound familiar? So worrying, feeling anxious, nervous, right? Negatively anticipating, that is you can negatively anticipate. You look forward and you say, ah, I know this is going to happen. I know I'm going to get stuck here. You can even negatively anticipate certain words or letters. So you can negatively anticipate entire speaking situations, right? 
and you can negatively anticipate certain words or letters that may be coming up while you're speaking. Self-consciousness. When a person becomes self-conscious of their speech, so you are going out and you're in a social situation and you don't speak up, you don't talk, even though you'd like to, you'd like to participate, but you don't because you're self-conscious. You are thinking about, right, you're thinking about the fact that you might get stuck, that you might struggle or stammer or speak too fast or the person may not understand you. Maybe even if you have an accent, you might be worried about, I wonder if people are going to understand me, right? So you're self-conscious, like I am self-conscious of my speech when I'm speaking in Spanish. And so I may not speak up or join in on lots of conversations, not until I start to feel more comfortable or if I'm comfortable with that person or comfortable with the way I'm speaking. So I'm pretty self-conscious of my speech and therefore I'll avoid certain speaking situations. I'll refrain from speaking, right? Because people are gonna be looking and saying, well, what is he saying? Is he saying the right thing? That's not the way you say that. And that does happen. But we have to learn how to break through that and we'll talk about that later. So, self-conscious, ruminating. Ruminating means when you go back and you think about, right, you kind of examine, you ponder, you review a situation that's happened, and it's when that becomes obsessive and you just continue to go back and think about the same thing over and over and over again. So it's kind of an obsessive going back and thinking about a specific situation. So if you have blocked or you've stammered or stuttered or you've spoken really fast or you lost your train of thought and you just keep going back thinking about that specific speaking situation over and over and over again, you are ruminating. And then when you ruminate, you often regret, ah, I shouldn't have done that. I wish I had did this instead. Oh, that probably did, didn't make me sound as intelligent as I actually am. So you start regretting it. Well, none of these things, and there are more, right? None of these things are going to help you, but they're all a part of your current mindset. Right? All a part of your current mindset. Now, in our next uh, session, we're going to talk about your speaking identity, which is related to mindset, but we wanted to distinguish it, so we'll put it in a separate session. And your mindset and your identity are the things that really drive your speech, drives your speech. So it doesn't matter what you do physically, but if your mindset and your identity doesn't change, you'll always slide back, you'll always come back to default. So this is very, very important. Don't overlook your mindset and your identity to focus on techniques. Now, obviously, techniques are important, they're very, very helpful, but mindset and speaking identity are more helpful because it's what's going to drive your progress and your improvement. So all of these challenges that people have with their mindset are extremely relevant. They're extremely common. They're things that happen to us, right, on a daily basis, sometimes on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. So what we want to look at then is how does Pro90D help you with that? So we want to look at the eight Pro90D daily activities, which we talked about in the last video or two. So let's go and take a look at these eight Pro90D Pro uh, daily activities. These are the things that you have to do each day. So the first one is affirmations. Next, seven steps, seven breathing. Visualization, verbalization, free flow, speaking. So let's just take a look at these and talk about how these can help you with your mindset. So when you say affirmations, what happens is you're now making a statement about the way you want to be, about the way you want to speak, about the way you want to sound, about the way you want other people to see you and to view you and to interact with you. You're making a statement of that. And what that statement is doing is it's substituting, it's pushing out the old statements, the old thoughts that you have. So the more you make these new constructive positive statements, the less space you have for the old destructive negative statements, 
or ways of thinking, right? It's a law of substitution. And there will be a battle. So when you're doing your affirmations, you'll feel resistance because your old pattern of thinking, it's a pattern, it's a habitual way of thinking, is wired in, like literally wired in. So you have neurological patterns, neurological network that represents this way of thinking. So when you try to change it or create a new way of thinking, a new neurological network, then you feel resistance because the wiring isn't there. The old wiring is there. Your brain resists doing something, thinking something new because it's using, it's requiring more effort and more energy. It doesn't want to do that. So your affirmations, this is your new statements about who you want to be, how you want to speak, how you want to think, how you want to feel, how you want to respond and react. 777 breathing is a way to relax you and give you greater breath control that impacts more so your way of speaking, but also obviously when we become more relaxed, then we're able to what? To think more positively, to think more clearly. We're not going to think as negatively. When we become more relaxed, we're in a mental state where we can receive our affirmations, right? Um, we call this, there, there are different uh, mental states that you and I can be in. Uh, in our fully awakened state, we're in beta. When we're more relaxed, it's alpha. Then when we're in sleep, it's theta. And then we can also go into delta, which is a more deeper sleep. Okay, so you can remember this by bat D. So beta, boom, we're awake, lots of stuff's going on. Alpha, we're awake, but we're relaxed. So great state to do affirmations, to do visualizations and verbalizations. So when you do a 777 breathing exercise, you can relax yourself down into an alpha state where you're awake, but you can also give yourself affirmations. You can say affirmations. And you can do this next thing, which is visualize. You can picture, you can imagine what you'd like to happen, or you can verbalize, you can speak what you'd like to happen. Okay, again, we go into details about all these things in the program, so I want to encourage you, get the program. Get the program. Okay? Invest in yourself. Get the program if you're able to do it. Don't, don't try to piece all this together just by watching the videos. The, pro the program is there. It's very, very affordable. You can get into it, and everything is laid out there. You also have a community that can support you. And if you're a professional and you want the fastest and easiest way to take your speech to that next level, then you're going to want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. That simply is the fastest, easiest way. When we try to do things on our own, it takes us much, much longer in general. And you and I simply don't know what we don't know. We have, all of us have our, our blind spots, stuff we can't see, or we think we're doing something and we're not, or we think we're doing something right, and maybe we're only doing it half right. So a professional speech coach can see those blind spots and point them out to you, whereas this, you simply can't do that for yourself, right? So what these activities do to help you with your mindset are it helps you with the way that you think, right? Affirmations, changing the thoughts that you have, the statements that you make, becoming more relaxed to get into a state where you can do the affirmations, you can do the visualization, verbalization. And then let's talk about free flow speaking. So free flow speaking is a way for you to experience smoother speech. So it's an exercise that we have that helps you experience smoother speech. And once you start to experience smoother speech using free flow speaking, then you start building confidence. Your brain says, aha, I can do this because I just did it. And so you begin to trust that you actually are capable of speaking smoother because you just did it. And that goes also for modeling. When you model someone, we, we explained this a little bit in the last video, when you model someone, you're mimicking them, you're imitating them, you're learning through observational learning, which we all do. The way you learn how to speak in the first place was by observing and modeling the people around you. So all of us model, we still model people around us, even if we're not conscious of it. Even if we don't deliberately do it, we're still modeling. So when someone says, modeling, no, I don't really like that. That doesn't really work for me. Well, guess what? It has worked 
already and it is working. I've even uh, worked with many people who've had people in their family who stuttered and they picked it up, right? They picked it up from their uncle or from their brother or from their father, right? I can't tell you how many people that's happened to. Uh, or someone actually started to mimic or tease or imitate someone. They didn't stutter before. They started to mimic someone who did and then they started to stutter, okay? So modeling, another way that actually helps you experience smooth speech very, very quickly, right? Very, very quickly. And then your brain says, ah, I can do this. So it starts to change your mindset, your way of thinking about your speech and about your possibilities. Practical application. So this is you going out and trying to put into practice some of the things that you're learning in the system. And so when you do this, what you're doing is you're easing yourself out there and you're trusting that you'll be able to do this, right? And so when you do that, you also begin to build confidence. Now you have to set up realistic expectations so you don't expect that you're gonna go out and all of a sudden be speaking smoothly. Pro90D is not something that you can do in isolation. Say, okay, I'm gonna work on Pro90D and then I'll go out and speak. No, you have to work on Pro90D and go out and speak at the same time. Now you can control your speaking situations, control the people that you speak with, how often you speak, what you say, how much control you have over that speaking situation. You can control those things so that you can build momentum. But the fact of the matter is you have to get out and you have to speak. You have to get out and speak while you're working on Pro 90D, while you're working through Pro 90D. You can't try to do it afterwards. It doesn't work that way, okay? so. Practical application, you get out, you start speaking to people, you start building your confidence, you set your expectations to say, hey, I'm not expecting to get out there and speak completely smoothly. I'm expecting that maybe I can make an incremental improvement, just a small improvement in this one conversation. So in the program, I say set your expectations to one. That is, look for very, very small incremental improvements. Don't expect to get out there and all of a sudden you're cured. Uh, you don't struggle with your speech anymore. That's not going to happen for most people. But if you expect to see and feel, feel a little bit more confident, see yourself speaking a little smoother, just a little smoother, then you will see that. You'll find that. You will filter in successes, right? But if you set unrealistic expectations, you'll filter out successes and you'll filter in the failures, the challenges that you have. That's all that you'll see. That's all that you'll focus on. So you'll lose encouragement and lose momentum. Does this make sense? Right? So practical application and then self-talk. Obviously, when, when we're changing our way of thinking and we're talking to ourselves, self-talk and affirmations aren't necessarily the same. When you're talking to yourself, you can be reminding yourself, encouraging yourself. Hey, remember to slow down. Just take your time, just relax. Okay, maybe that didn't go as well as you'd like, but that's fine, that's fine. So you, can, you talk to yourself, you remind yourself of certain things, you encourage yourself. Whereas affirmations are generally speaking kind of fixed statements, kind of the same thing you're saying. It doesn't have to be that way, but just generally speaking, when we think of affirmations, we think we're making a statement, we're saying the same things over and over. Self-talk is much more flexible but it should be positive and encouraging. It shouldn't be like you're beating yourself up. Oh, I shouldn't have did that. Why did I do that? I knew I was going to do that. I'm probably going to do it again. That's self-talk as well. And that's something that people do, and sometimes they're not aware that they're talking to themselves and what they're saying to themselves. So one of the first things that happens in Pro 90 Days is you become aware of what you're saying, of the fact that you are talking to yourself right? And that you're aware of what you're saying. So when we say self-talk, we're not talking necessarily about speaking aloud. These are internal thoughts for the most part, right? So self-talk absolutely changes your mindset, absolutely affects, impacts, changes your mindset, and is impacted by your mindset. But here's the thing. With Pro90D, you can determine your mindset. You can change your mindset by what you say to yourself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. That's what Pro90D helps you do is change 
the frequency, the awareness, the frequency, and the very content of what you're saying to yourself, okay, which changes your pattern of thinking, which changes your way of seeing and believing yourself, which changes the way that you speak. Okay? And then audio listening and video watching absolutely impacts and changes your mindset because you and I learn through our experiences, yes, right? But how do we learn through our experience? Well, we learn by what we see, what we hear, what we listen to, by what we do, by how we interpret what we see and hear and what we do. We learn from other people, right? Observational learning. Okay, so all these are just ways of learning. We learn through our smell and through our taste, right? And all those things as well. So when you're listening to audio or watching video, you're, you're learning information, you're taking in information. So one of the things that you want to do is develop a strong habit of listening to audio. Why? Because you can listen to audio in various situations, when you're driving, when you're exercising, when you're cooking, um, when you're doing activities that don't require your conscious attention at that time, right? If it's just repetitive or something that's semi-repetitive, then you can have audio or video on. So when we're listening, we're taking in information, we're making new impressions, we're making an impact, right, uh, on our brains with this new information, which helps to change our mindset helps change what we're thinking and change the way we're thinking because we're listening to something that's more encouraging, that's more instructive, right? We're listening to something new that's helping to change our mindset. The same thing with watching video. Now, I'm not a big video watcher, believe it or not. I'd much rather listen to audio. So you, can, you don't have to sit and watch a video. You can put a video on and listen to it like many of my clients do. Or you can spend some time throughout the day to watch a video so you can see how the person's moving, their body language, facial expressions, right? All those things. Uh, some people like to sit down and watch videos bec because they are more focused. The only problem with watching videos is that people feel like I got to carve time out of my day to sit and watch videos. If they're busy, then they end up not doing it. So watching videos is great, but don't feel like you can't listen to an audio or listen to a video, uh, what we find is that people will listen to far more content than they will watch. Okay, they'll listen far more than they will watch. So create a habit of listening. But just remember, audio listening and video watching are two of the things that can passively change your mindset just by listening every day, every single day, throughout the day, whenever you can. You can change the way you think about something. I can recall decades ago when I got into audio listening, a friend actually got me into it, listening to Brian Tracy. I would listen to it, and even though I didn't do much about it, I didn't do what he said, I just listened. And so I started to think differently about my time and about goals and about myself. I could hear his voice in my head saying certain things, right, which also helped me with modeling. So by listening to this guy every single day, Thousands and thousands of hours, literally, and I'm not exaggerating, I had audio cassette tapes back then, we're talking 20, 30 years ago, where I literally wore out the tapes, right, by listening to this person so much, some of the tapes would get stuck in my cassette player in my car. Most cars don't even have that anymore. They have uh, DVD play, I mean, um, CD players, and they're phasing those out, right? So I listened so much that would just start to change the content of my thoughts. So audio listening, and I use Audible, Audible, I use that, I'll just write that down for you. It's an Amazon company, and you can get audio books. In fact, you can even subscribe to our podcasts through Audible, if you want, you can find us there. Uh, audio listening is very, very powerful for changing your mindset. So, hopefully, this session has been helpful for you in helping you see specifically how the activities that you are going to perform, that you're going to participate in each and every day, how those activities impact your mindset. Now, remember, to take advantage of this, you're going to 
want and need to get into the program, get the system, buy the self-study minimally, but if you're a professional and you want the fastest, easiest way to level up your speech, take your speech to the next level, working with me one-on-one -on -one is the best way to do that. You don't want to look at this like an expense, you want to look at this like an investment. So if you know that this is the very best way to take your speech to the next level, then the only thing stopping you is, do I believe that this is true or not? Like, is this really true that this will help take my speech to the next level? Um, do I have the time to do it? Well, you can start with as little as 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day, and you can break that up throughout your day. Can you do that? If you really want to take your speech to the next level, then remember, you're making an investment, and it's an investment that you expect to get a return on, a financial return. There's other returns, but you're going to get a financial return. So think about your next promotion, your next job. How much will you earn? Will you earn at least $2,500? Will you earn at least $3,000? Maybe $10,000. $15,000, I had a guy earn $30,000, more than $30,000. One job, one job interview, because he was, he was not being paid anywhere near what he should have because of his speech. So one job while he and I were working together, $30,000 plus. So just imagine three thousand, four, five thousand. That's just the first year. What about the next year and the year after that and the year after that? How much will you earn? So you see how an investment in your speech can pay dividends and they'll be exponential because you won't just earn that same amount, but that amount will be multiplied because you'll go out and you'll increase and improve your capacity, right? So you'll earn even more. And then just the your lifestyle and your livelihood, you just be able to enjoy your life more and have more and do more. So this is an investment. So the only question is, do you struggle with your speech? Well, not the only question, but one of the questions, do I struggle with my speech? Do I believe the Pro90D Smooth speech, speech System can help me? And will I make the investment? Am I willing to make the investment? You're gonna spend the money someplace eventually, right? I've seen it happen. So the question is, do I want to invest it here or do I want to invest in something that's not going to necessarily give me a return like this? Thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead, get into the course or work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Make sure that we have links there. Um, we have specials that are going on, so make sure that you're aware of those. We'll make sure that you have links and so forth that will direct you to that. Get started now because the longer you wait, the more opportunities you lose, the more money you lose, right, was opportunity. Uh, and the harder it gets for you to change because you start building your life around your speech. You start building your personality identity around your speech. It just becomes harder and harder to make the change. So I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to working with you. This is Michael Williams and make sure you stay tuned for our next session where we talk about identity. Mindset and identity are the two big ones that drive everything else. So we'll see you next time.